Welcome to the Leo Training Podcast with Joe DeLeo. You'll hear in-depth interviews and tips from world-class athletes, coaches, and industry-leading experts to help you train smarter and improve at what you love to do. Train smarter, get stronger, move better, race faster. Here's your host, Joe DeLeo. Hi, everyone. We're back with episode 13 of the Leo Training Podcast. Today's guest is Jeff Sokol. Jeff is a strong first team leader and coach at Elite Sports and Spine in Seattle, Washington. Jeff was gracious enough to sit down with me and share his journey to strength. Jeff is one of the most passionate and energetic people I've ever met. His enthusiasm for coaching carries over to his clients and the way he leads his life. I was fortunate enough to experience this firsthand during a recent trip to Seattle, where I got to know Jeff a little bit more, and so will you during this interview. You'll also learn a little bit more about Jeff's training philosophy and why he considers himself a durability coach. Now let's roll to episode 13, Building Durability and Strength with Jeff Sokol. Jeff Sokol, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, It's great catching up with you, my friend. Uh, I was very fortunate to see you uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Seattle. Uh, we had the pleasure of meeting you in person. So it's awesome to take some time, catch up again, and share uh, share some of your knowledge and experience with uh, the strength and conditioning community. Hey, friends. Jeff Sokol here, Strong First Team Leader. Uh, Joe, super happy to be talking to you again. I really enjoyed our time together up in uh, Seattle. Uh, it was a great experience. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, it was good. We did, we got in some uh, some good sessions those couple of days together. It was fun. Oh yeah, you taught me a little trick uh, that I've been using quite a bit with that uh, cross crawl kettlebell push. Is uh, very effective. Nice, very cool, very cool. Um, so let's just kick things off. Let's let's have you talk about your background uh, and your journey into uh, the health and fitness uh, industry. <laughs> Well, first of all, I have a couple of goals for this uh, this podcast, Joe. I want to put this out here right away. Uh, number one goal is no cursing. So, uh, try, and, try and keep me in check there. Uh, w- w- when we get into my background a bit, you might understand why the, uh, the cursing thing. I-, I come from a long line of uh, professional cursors, but I'm going to do my best. And number two... Uh, Drives the wife crazy, drives me crazy, but I happen to do a lot of you knows, <laughs> you know, you know, you know. So these are my two goals for this podcast. It's good to have goals. Uh, so I'm going to work on bottom of my best. All right. Awesome. That sounds good. I saw the, uh, I got the email came through from Facebook right there, right before we got on here. <laughs> so I saw that. <laughs> so, uh, gosh, where do I start? Um, basically I grew up in a very small logging town, uh, about a thousand people. So I was kind of raised with that hard work ethic type of uh, upbringing and uh, where you found a, a job and, and you kept it. D- didn't matter if you really loved it, <laughs> but there wasn't a whole bunch of them that were coming around the corner. So you kind of got one and you, and you worked it. Um, some people uh, got God bless them. I, I respect them to death, but you know, they find this one path and they stay on it, whether it brings them joy or, uh, or fence, you know, uh, fulfillment. It's just part of paying the bills and, and raising a family. And my job history kind of revolved around that. Um, I had, uh, several different jobs, but they were all of the kind of the ditch digger, hardworking, uh, type of, type of stuff, right? Um, Navy was my first job out of high school, which was, uh, all in all, a great experience. I think if I would have went straight to college at the time, I probably would have uh, got the PR for the longest cake stand. I, I really wasn't in a uh, in a position for higher learning at that point. Uh, uh, really enjoyed sports and all that stuff, but was never quite good enough to to secure a, a full ride or, or something like that. And uh, you know, our family you know, hardworking and all, but we're not millionaires, so uh, the, the the military at that time seemed like a pretty good. Uh, opportunity to to grow. So I did five years of that. Uh, something that would I do it again eh, if I was really needed, but maybe not. But do I regret it? Absolutely not. Had uh, grew a lot, learned a lot about life, made a lot of great friends, uh, seen uh, a few things in uh, in third world countries uh, that uh, made me appreciate 
life on this side of the pond a little bit more. So all in all, great experience. But uh, right when I got out of that, my first job uh, was a garbage man. <laughs> I, uh, I moved back to Mount Vernon, uh, where my family had moved when I was a, a sophomore in high school. And Started riding behind this garbage truck. Uh, I mean, basically, I got out of the military, got home on a on a Saturday, and I was working again on Monday. Uh, went straight to it. Uh, wow. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I really didn't take much of a break. Uh, <laughs> I'll say you went, you went right, right out of the military, right to the next job. No downtime. None. No, none, none. Right, and uh, and and, my, and I've told you before, I, I can get on a tangent here, so. I'm I'm the a guy that accepts being interrupted, brother. So if I get going <laughs> off on you know into another world, just stop me. No, this is good, man. Just I'm just letting it, I'm letting it flow. I'm letting it flow. Okay, all right. So I did the garbage man thing for a while, and it was like the old school minute work, you know, riding on the back of the truck, throwing uh, garbage cans, looking through the things for Coke miles to give to the drivers. I mean, I was just a good old fashioned garbage man, right? Uh, loved it. No stress. Didn't have to think about anything, right? But at the end of the day, work your butt off. The garbage is there tomorrow, <laughs> right? I was never making any ground. It's like, you know, I could throw the garbage cans as fast as I possibly could, be the most efficient guy on the whole route, which I ended up being. I, I think guys would get pissed at me. They so will slow down because they're going to expect this, right? You need to you need to slow down a little bit. But anyways, that's another story. But uh, <laughs> uh, I did that for a while and I, it, it just wasn't something that I, that I was going to do for the rest of my life. So I was like, okay, I need to go on another journey. And because of the military, also I was in at home for two years. So it was like almost time to do another tour or go to another duty station or something, right? So I wanted to get into snowboarding and mountain biking and, and things like this. So I moved to Salt Lake City, Utah. I, uh, I fit what I could fit in the back of a little Toyota truck and uh, headed headed to Utah. I figured I could be close to the city. The mountains would be there. I'd have a chance of getting a gig. Um, I scored this job. Basically, I was Homer Simpson for another five years. I got a job uh, treating hazardous materials out at a uh, a site in the uh, in the West Desert, uh, out in the middle of nowhere. I'm t- I mean, literally nowhere. It's like where they go do the land speed. Uh, you know, there's nothing. <laughs> just desert. Right? They're, so they're testing I, the sound the sound uh, barrier. Ex- yeah, yeah. Where I was treating hazardous waste. Yeah, I mean, obviously they didn't want it near the city, so that probably wasn't going to be a great career either. I mean, you know, next thing you know, I'm growing stuff out of my head. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I uh, I did that for a while. Uh, moved back to Mount Vernon. There was some stuff in the in between there. I had gotten married while I was in Utah. Got divorced. Uh, kind of hit me pretty hard. But uh, you know, that's that's a talk for another time. But due to the divorce, it was time to get out of Utah. I wasn't going to stay there. I mean, I loved it, but I, I wasn't going to stay there. Um, oh, and before I left, I, I did a dream job. I was a, a lift operator for a, a season at a ski resort. So that was, that was kind of fun. And that, and that was kind of my purge. It's, you know, it's like, Hey, I got to go back. I got nothing to go back to. Um, no job, no nothing. So why don't I just be a lifty for the winter and just chill? <laughs> right. So I did that. Just did a lot of soul searching then. Drove back to Mount Vernon and went to see a friend. He said, you can stay with me. Uh, his boss or his friend, which ended up being my boss, came over that night and says, holy cow, one of our drivers, our truck driver, delivery driver, stole five bucks out of a uh, cash register. And I had to fire him. I need a driver immediately because I am heading to um, to Hawaii. And it was a small company, a food service company. And my buddy goes, this guy's a hard worker. And he's like, you ever drove a semi? Uh, nope, never, never drove a semi. I had no idea. And like, can you get your, no joke. He said, can you get your commercial driver's license in two weeks? I said, yeah, no problem. So again, I left Utah and that was on a Saturday. So I started working Monday uh, by chance, right? So I uh, learned how to be a, a semi truck driver. Um, and I promised him that I would give him five years because he helped me do this. So I drove around in a semi truck delivering groceries in the middle of the night, um, for five years. Uh, it was, it was, it was another soul searching thing. You know, it was the middle of the night, but all this stuff was really leading me nowhere. I, I, they were great. Um, and I, I honor everybody that does these jobs, but for me, it, it really, 
there wasn't no fulfillment. There, it wasn't pushing me anywhere or making me feel proud or whatever. Um, and then I left that job to the job that broke the camel's back, the one that really set me off. I worked for the government for the first time outside of the military. It was a state job. Um, and like I said, I've always been a hard worker. When I drove the truck, I could be the best truck driver there, there was. I could deliver those groceries so fast. And I, it, it, I mean, it was great. So I had something to keep me busy there. Well, I went to this job. Um, I don't want to, gosh, I, I feel bad talking about this, but, um, it felt like I was wasting taxpayers money every day for a job. And, it, uh, basically we, we worked harder to not work. And I don't, it, uh, and, the only way I could survive was to stop fighting that and become that. Right. That was it. Cause this was the job that had, uh, benefits and in a small town situation. You got benefits. Do it, Jeff. You, I mean, do it. You have to do this. You're going to have medical. You're going to have all, you know, 401, everything. Do it. And I'm like, ah, you're right. So I did my five years of truck driving and I decided to go into this world, like I said. And then before you know it, five years later, I'm 240 pounds. Um, I got size 38 pants. I'm eating donuts at the safety meetings. Just, ah, yeah. <laughs> right. And that started the downward spiral of, you know, not even giving a shit about anything. I mean, I just literally, ah, nothing mattered. Just drinking, partying, going out, bar, hop, you know, just being a, a, a jag off, uh, around my friends and family. I put on kind of a different face, but, uh, it ended up bringing out all of my depression and post whatever stresses that happened in my life all came to a head when I was in that position of giving up and just going into the system, just, you know, go to work, go home, pay the bills, buy some more shit you don't need, pay more bills, you know, just that vicious cycle of working to pay for the crap that you don't need. You know, but anyways, uh, and that ended up leading to, um, another relationship gone very bad. Uh, and, uh, and I went really deep into the, the, the rabbit hole, so to speak. I, I was left in my house trying to, uh, pay for it. Um, uh, the DOT thing was pushing me over the edge. So I really couldn't, uh, see staying there any longer. Um, and you know, I started pouring me stuff. And uh, next thing you know, I'm wanting to, you know, blow my brains out in the middle of the living room floor, to be frank. Um, and then that experience hitting that rock bottom, people know about it. Some do, some don't, is somehow I ended up ordering this DVD system called Kettable. Um, what the hell was it called now? I can't even remember. It was that uh, celebrity trainer to the stars, uh, Kettleworks, right? I, uh, yes, I had ordered this Kettleworks, uh, DVD series, um, in a drunken, um, sad, blown down stupor. And that, you know, that story can go so much different way, but I don't want to go there today, right? It's, sun's out. It's nice. Um, in Seattle, that, we, we don't get that every day. Um, but to make a long story short, that introduced me to the kettlebell. And even though what I was doing with the kettlebell, come to find out later, was basically ridiculous. Um, it still sparked my interest and I started working these, there was a three DVDs. There was one called power, which looking back at it, the heaviest bell I have is 25 pounds, <laughs> you know, that came, <laughs> right. So I don't know how much power I was having, but I was getting my ass kicked. I could really sincerely tell you that. Um, and then there was a burn one and then there was an ab one. I don't know if you've heard, have you heard of this, uh, kettle works fella? No, uh, no, but, but I, before our interview, I checked out, I think the, the story is up on your website. So I read, I read that oh, background. Yeah. So I know what okay. uh, DVD series you're, you're talking about. And I, I think I got a remark. So the audience knows, I think that's kind of funny. I imagining you with a 25 pound kettlebell after, <laughs> after having met you in person and, and spotting you when you're, when you're doing a Turkish get up with the, with the beast, the 106 pound kettlebell, which isn't even the heaviest bell you've done. Uh, or heaviest weight, excuse me, that you've done. So the, the, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible, uh, knowing that that's, that's cool. And, and, and that's the thing with this stuff. Uh, we, we, we tend to make fun of it a lot because it's easy to do that. Right. Um, but there's a lot of good stories like mine where one of these silly DVD things, um, at least led you into some type of fitness path. Um, some stay on that path and work out with that 25 pounds for the rest of their life, but Hey, great. 
it, you know, but it led me to finding Pavel and experiencing what strength and what kettlebell training and what movement and all that stuff really meant. I mean, I really had no idea. Uh, I, uh, I was a gym rat back in the day. You know, I did my, my push, you know, curls and the triceps and bench and I did all that. I did it forever. And, uh, and speaking of that, why I was doing that, I would have never thought I was going to be a coach. <laughs> Uh, you know, I look around, I, what we had at our place was in, in Mount Vernon was the expensive Riverside Health Club or, or dang, I hate when I say the names of these places. Uh, sorry about that. But you have the one that costs uh, a little bit more and then you have your little box gym or the, the world global type of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So I worked at, at the global type of thing and uh, and really, really, really had no idea of what it meant to be a coach or because the coaches there, you know. God bless them. They're starting and they're learning and they're, and they're, but I, I didn't know nothing. And I still felt like I, I was in better, better off working by myself. Right. So right. that thing, like I want to do what they're doing. That, ne- that, that never, ever, ever uh, entered the, entered the, my mind ever. But, uh, but anyway, so going back to Pavel, uh, once I discovered him, it, uh, it, it was like, this is perfect. Uh, I'm angry. And not that Pavel's is an angry thing, but what I'm doing with this bell and when I'm doing those pistol thingies that I'm doing with that 25 pound bell, I'm working on my issues when I have a 53 pound kettlebell and I'm swinging it. Right. I mean, I, I, I was able to shut off everything when I discovered that system um, and get into like this flow state of, wow, OK, I'm doing it this way, but I want to do it that way. And, you know, what is it going to take for me to get there? So when I started, di- I get, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. But when I started to dive into that, that practice of strength and everything, that's when Shazam, I mean, my depression and all my stuff was starting to slowly but surely go away. I started to have a little more purpose again, even if the purpose was just getting a better swing. I mean, Jesus, you know, I had something to look forward to when I got home from work from that ch- place I was working. Right. right? So, right. uh, but anyway, so. That, uh, that went on for a while. I was, I was still working at the DOT, but, uh, I started, started up martial arts again. Um, and the martial arts instructor, uh, Marlo Lou Farland, great, great guy. Um, he's, uh, battling cancer right now. And I, if anybody can send a positive thought when they read the, just anyways, right. Uh, really pulling for the guy, but, uh, he, he let me bring kettlebells to the martial arts studio. So I kept them in there and, uh, was still playing with them. Uh, but I hadn't even got my HKC yet. I was just starting to, starting to discover it and, and feel it out. Uh, so I started coaching some of my buddies a little bit. Uh, and they're all like, wow, you know, you, you don't know shit, but you're pretty good at this. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, from what you've read, you're pretty good at making me do it. Um, so next thing you know, I, I, I discover, uh, Andrea Yushi Chang in Seattle, uh, looking for Russian kettlebell. And at that time she was it. I mean, there was nobody around here that, that knew anything at that point, uh, uh about hard style or, or Russian. So I set up a, a, an appointment with her and I went down and had my first real coaching session, like a real coaching session, you know? And I was like, wow. So this, this is what that's about. Right. Uh, um, awesome. And man. that really, awesome. yeah, that, that really like lit my fire. Like, man, okay. So. I don't know how, I don't know what, but I'm going to learn how to do this, the, the way that they're doing this. This is it. Um, and then um, she told me, hey, we have this HKC thing. Um, and at this point, I was still 230 pounds, but I was working my way back. You know, I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm starting to feel good. I'm kicking stuff at the gym. I'm <laughs> with my buddies and I'm swinging and it's like, OK, you know, I'm not pissed. You know, I feel pretty good. Uh, but but uh, after. Uh, Two or three sessions with Andrea signed up for the HKC, the, the, the original, um, when Pavel was still with, uh, Dragon Door. It was their entry level, uh, one day course, but it, it taught you the really good foundations to go home, go back and start, you know, you know, getting into the craft of coaching a little bit and actually having an idea of, uh, that the movements in a deeper process. But signed up for that, met Zar Horton. Oh my God. Uh, and, and a couple other of the assistants there, uh, Doug Neopol and, and, uh, and there's a few others. I'm drawing a blank right now, but, uh, anyways, I was that, 
really, really sealed the deal. It was over after that. Um, I remember seeing Zar for the first time, and it's like, man, that, my goal is to have forearms like that dude. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and to be as cool as that guy, as strong as he was. I mean, if you looked at guy, I mean, you understand why his name is Zar, but you look at him and – Holy moly. And then he talks and he just comes off with such professionalism and, and calmness. And, but the intensity's in there. It, it, it's just really inspiring to be around people like that. And, um, and that's when I was like, I'm going to be a coach. That's it. Boom. Done deal. Um, and then I, uh, I went after it at full head of steam. Uh, my first, my first deals were, uh, I, I, at the martial arts studio, uh, when my, when my instructor got cancer. Uh, he was going to this really cool, uh, this church and the, the, the uh, pastor took martial arts. So, and, and he drove a Harley, uh, rode a Harley and had tattoos. That's and awesome. Tough, yeah. Cool guy. But, uh, he said, you guys to save money, to help fight your, for your treatment, you can move uh, your martial arts studio into our church gym. So we moved the ring, we moved everything into the gym, brought all the kettlebells and my friend Clint Twilliger and I, which I have to give a huge shout out to, he, uh, he was the only one when I said I was going to quit the DOT to be a coach that said, you can do it. My, everybody said, you're an idiot. Everybody. I mean, mom, dad, love you. <laughs> really do. But they're, you're an idiot. <laughs> what, what are you doing? You know, you got benefits. You got this. You got right. that. Why in the hell are you going to step away from this? You know, well, you guys don't know this, but a couple of weeks ago, I almost shot myself in the face. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously right. I didn't say that, but, uh, but anyways, uh, so we, we, we started doing these classes at five in the morning, five, and it was donation only. That's it. And with the donations, we gave $20 um, uh, of every hundred to the church and we bought equipment. Right. So that just kept going on and going on. And before you know it, we had we, we, we ended up calling it the uh, Skagit Valley Kettlebell Club. But we ended up having almost 25 people at its height that came in there and started taking this class with us for donation only at five in the morning. And, and then, um, wow. Yeah, right. Uh, 5 yeah, yeah. Are you getting 25 yeah. people to show? Oh up? yeah. 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 And, and on a daily basis, you know, uh, we would have 10 easy 10 to 12 and we'd go through workouts. We'd have circuits and the, the majority of the stuff was kettlebells. Uh, and that's when my buddy was like, okay, dude, you're going to quit the DOT. And you're going to be a coach. <laughs> that's what you're going to do. Done deal. You know? And I'm like, no way. You know? So he lit that fire. And then, uh, uh, I started coming, going out of my garage. After, so I do the church thing for free, and then I started doing little paid ones out of my garage. Well, actually, my living room floor first before I could uh, <laughs> fix the garage up enough. So nice. if you look at some, if you look at some old pictures of my clients in there swinging on my living room floor, and at that time um, I was in the house by myself trying to pay for it, so you could see the Kramer. And there's a Kramer picture on the wall. I mean, it was total. All I had was a fish tank and, and a chair. Everything else was gone, and I was just crashing there. But anyways. Started doing that, started building up clients, and um, that was going great. And I had this plan of doing something up there in the Skagit Valley, and uh, the house went away. I couldn't pay for it anymore because I'd quit the DOT, and I, now I'm training. Oh, no, so I hadn't quit yet. Uh, but then uh, after I got the clients going, I called Andrea. We got my RKC thing going. Went out there, passed that thing, and then I started commuting back and forth 60 miles each way to train with Mar uh, um, Andrea. Did that for a little bit, while and then just up and quit the DOT. Just quit. And uh, lived in one of my clients, lover, Marjana King's basement. So yeah. I, she let me live there to help me build my clientele. So... I mean, God, I, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. So I'm, I'm going to get it all, you know, emotional. You may have seen her. She's a yep. 75 year old lady. That yeah, I met her while I was out there. She's awesome. She's awesome. Very, very sweet lady, rocking, rocking her Turkish getups. Right, 75 years old and doing getups. So, Joe, again, stop me if I'm rambling too much. Because I, I mean, we're, we're uh, as far as I can see, we're just sitting here, or her rapping. You know, I yeah, no, this is podcast. great, man. No, no, this okay. is awesome. <laughs> So you okay. got so uh, you got the the RKC. You're commuting back mm -hmm. and forth um, mm -hmm. to to Andre's place, Kettlebility, correct? Yes. And mm -hmm. then uh, you're starting to build your your clientele base. And then absolutely, you, you you quit the DOT. I quit the DOT, and I was just driving back and forth, driving back and forth, driving back and forth. And then uh, my very first client at Kettlebility was Marjana. Okay. Um, and this is yeah, I mean this is 
years ago. It's kind of funny. And she walked in and, uh, met Andrea and I just, just, just started there. And she says, uh, Marjana uh, points at me and says, you're going to train with that guy over there. And, <laughs> and at that point, uh, I was on my divorce diet, you know, kind of, uh, or, and all this weird stuff. And, uh, so I got down to like 175 and, you know, I was all shredded and whatever. And, and, uh, she, she's like, Oh, there's no way I'm going to even walk in front of that handsome man. <laughs> but anyway, so she walked over there. Um, I won her, won her hard over and, uh, she, I worked with her three times a week. Uh, and she helped me become a better coach. Right. Um, uh, so, so I love her to death and I really want to make sure that I say Marjana King at least one more time. But, uh, but, Anyways, so she let me live in the basement, kept going, kept building clients, starting to hustle, 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 um, had a couple times there where I was like, man, I don't know, I should just go find another job, uh, uh, get, get a steady paycheck, but I was kind of a bachelor at this time, so I only had to worry about myself. Uh, so, so I don't have children. I didn't, um, I had to adopt my, my dog out, Bo, um, but I, that was a tough period, but anyway, uh. I had nothing to lose at the, at that point. And, uh, so I never, I never quit. Um, and then before you know it, I, I'm teaching classes with Andrea, um, transfer into the, the strong first world when the, the, the split happened and, uh, and worked with her for a couple of years. Um, really learning the, the, the craft of coaching. Um, she's probably, uh, lover, very technical, driven, right? Yeah. If you're going to be swinging that capability, you're going to be doing it right. Or someone's going to tell you about it. And that's cool. <laughs> right. I like that. Right. right. So, right. um, while, I, while I was there, I really, um, learned how to be a practitioner and, and, and a coach. And then before you know it, um, elite sports and spine, um, offered me an opportunity to come down there and start, uh, a kettlebell program with my type, my own little flair. Um, and, uh, I've been running with that uh, for the last couple of years and uh, having a time in my life. Uh, so it's to make a long story short, which I could have did. It, it's been a long journey of uh, working pretty much odd jobs. Uh, and uh, next thing you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that I truly, truly love. I mean, I can't even say it any more than that. So no, man, I, I, uh, I know that I got to spend three days with you out there in Seattle when I, when I was out there and, um, it is very apparent, I think, for anybody that has the, the opportunity to uh, do a training session with you, whether they're a client or they're, they're popping in from out of town like I was, that your, your passion and enthusiasm uh, carries over into, into uh, your work. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And you definitely got to be on your toes when you're with you because the energy <laughs> the energy's at, at a high level. We got some we got some awesome music playing and uh, yeah, so it was good. It was it was a lot of fun and I certainly learned a lot uh, while I was out there with you. So it was a great great opportunity for me to uh, first time in a, a couple of months I've had the chance to step back and just and just work on the floor and assist and and, uh, and take some some notes. So thank you. Yeah, that was it. Oh yeah, no, it's my pleasure. I, I love when um, people come in from out of town. I actually had uh, a guy all, all the way from um, uh, Norway today. <laughs> wow! Uh, yeah, yeah, he was in town, and his coach said, uh, "If you're in Seattle and you don't uh, go hang out with Jeff for a little bit, um, you're, you're going to be missing missing out." And uh, so I, I'm very honored by that, and it's very crazy to me to think that I, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's really weird. I know it's because of the social media thing or, or, or whatnot, but, uh, to think that people stop in and make me part of their vacation is just, it blows my mind period. I mean, I don't even know how to, how to quantify it. It's, yeah, yeah, no, that's crazy. awesome, man. It's a, it's a great feeling. It's really, it's a great way to connect with people and, and meet new people. And, uh, you know, the best part is you, you get to get in a training session and learn something new and, just the uh, get the get the endorphins flowing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm oh. all about having fun. That's right, man. That's right. So, real quick before we before we get into the next thing, why don't you talk real real quick um, about uh, elite sports and spine and everything and, and that kind of facility because it's it's pretty unique um, in the sense that you have the you walk in the front door and, and on the left is sort of the, the gym side and then on the right is the the clinical side. 
Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about that and, and kind of the, the work that uh, you and your staff are doing there? It is amazing. And, and I really believe that uh, the future of quality training is, is this dynamic. It's, it's, so, it's so amazing. Uh, and I can tell you so many awesome stories of how, how it actually works, going, uh, taking from rehab to performance. It's, 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 it, I see it every day now um so we have the performance side which is um our performance side we have classes uh we have small group private training our classes range from uh hit training uh trx sandbag training um some barbell training kettlebell training animal flow um, club bell yoga. So we cover a pretty wide range of, uh, of practices there. And every one of our coaches uh, that we have there are extremely high, high, high level. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Andrews that, that handles the TRX and sandbag training. She's a master level instructor in both of them and has looked to, to, uh, to, to be a, a guiding light in, in both systems. And we have her right at the house. Um, so um, all of our coaches are, are outstanding. We have four strong first coaches there. Um, Kristen, our, our fitness manager, just, just, just to watch her, uh, take a, a hit class, something that I never really understood and maybe sometimes mocked. Um, she puts them through the, uh, uh, a hit program that would look like it's almost a strong first train program because, you know, the, the technique, the, every, the, everything is focused. It's not just a bunch of random, um, acts of whatever, you know? Um, so, uh, it, in, in that sense, I, I think we stand above, uh, just, just the fact that we hire people that have a lot of experience so that the client is going to come in there. Um, the last thing we want to do is promote health on one side of the building and, and, and pain-free movement on the other side, break people. <laughs> that right. would be ridiculous. <laughs> right. Right. So, so, on, so we have that on the performance side going, which is outstanding. And then on the uh, on the, the chiropractic side, uh, we have a, we have a couple awesome docs over there that uh, Zach and the guys uh, and our owner Scott that I can't thank them enough. Um, they uh, but they are they they take care of getting the people moving and moving uh, pain free, uh, and they use. Uh, ART and, uh, Graston and, uh, you know, they really get into the deeper point of the problem instead of we're definitely not a, a snap, crackle, pop, come back tomorrow type of facility. Uh, so I really feel they're, they're kind of the new age, um, type of clinician that it's not that old dogmatic thing. Um, and I, I really, uh, I really like the way that, 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 that they lead themselves as, as doctors that uh, we, all are FMS certified, so all of us coaches, um, at least we can all speak the same language there. And, and I really love that communication piece. And then we have our athletic trainer, Yuki, which is <laughs> – he's like a mad scientist with rehab. <laughs> I mean – the guy studies and studies and studies and he comes over and tries it out on me. You know, I, 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 he's, he's just, he's cutting edge, man. And I love the guy. And so the docs get him pain free or moving well and, and, and treat the dysfunction. And then, uh, Yuki puts him through a solid, solid rehab regime. And then that when, when applicable, Yuki passes them off to me. And we put them through some uh, loading the dysfunction and uh, just teach them some skills of strength uh, and mostly strong first principles, to be honest. Uh, and then the patients uh, start to realize that, wow, OK, so I do my homework that Yuki gives me. Uh, I come over here and I learn how to move with skill and purpose. And the next thing you know, they're coming in and joining classes they're like, holy cow, I, I freaking feel amazing. Right. Instead of. Hey, let's do a couple snap, crackle, pops. Go over here and do a couple uh, banded bird dogs and go. Uh, y y you're good, right? We 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 take that next step and teach them skills of strength and movement, right? So hopefully, if they come back, they're coming back to performance side. Our goal is not to make them come back to the clinic side. Right. You know, we want to get them over here, moving, swinging, having a good time. Um, and it's been great for me because I'm around the docks all day long, so. My coaching, uh, has improved a whole lot and, and my, my rehab and, and my knowledge uh, of how to work with really difficult, uh, situations. Um, and I, I mean, if we, if we get into some of my clients, uh, you'd, you'd be surprised at, um, the, the wide range of, of people I teach, uh, strong first principles and, and that get a hell of a lot out of it.
Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the facility's amazing. I love, um, just the way it's, it's laid out. It's, there's a ton of open space, you know, there's a, oh, just, it's, beautiful. it's about movement, you know, whether you're yeah. on the, the continuum where you're coming in, um, and, and, you know, working to get out of pain or you're on the performance side that, that is, uh, very clear when you walk through the door. Uh, so it was, yeah, it's a top notch facility. If, uh, if anybody is in the Seattle area or visiting, highly recommend, uh, going to check it out. Um, and, uh, and, you know, stopping by to meet Jeff and the, and the rest of the staff at, at Elite for sure. So, so Jeff, let's, let's segue right into that. Let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned to me when I, when I stopped out there, you have a, a wide variety of, of clientele that you've worked with. Um, you know, you have, uh, Marjana, uh, who's 75 and you've also worked with, I believe you said, a, a retired NHL player or a, is it a baseball player? A, a, a professional uh, level hockey player. Yeah. So your clientele kind of varies along, you know, the, the ability level for a human being, you know, in terms of, uh, what they're capable of. Um, so why don't, why don't you, you know, let's wrap about that a little bit. Okay. So, uh, Gosh, there's so many awesome success stories I could tell you about, but, uh, I enjoy training, um, elite athletes and people that require minimal coaching, just tightening the screws, uh, and really get them to perform better. Um, but my real passion is working with your everyday athlete, uh, just, you know, whatever. It, Programmer, we have a lot of those in Seattle, uh, a, a lot of uh, tech workers and whatnot, um, um, and, and that's my favorite type of client. But the ones that really, I really, 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 really go home feeling like, man, my job is the best, is people that are, in quotes, disabled. Um, I had a, a, a guy that worked with me for three years. Um, his name is Josh. Uh, he's taking a break due to a, a job change, but, uh, he had, uh, spina bifida. Um, and, uh, it's like, man, what do I, what do I do here? You know, I mean, how, how am I going to help this guy out, uh, with this, uh, with this disability without breaking him or, or whatnot? Um, and, uh, we've ended up working out for, Three years together, the guy's, uh, doing standing, uh, 24 kg presses, uh, uh, deadlifting, um, uh, up to the 32, uh, uh, being able to go up to the palm position of the get up, um, uh, with a 24, uh, getting, uh, you know, coming after every, he, uh, every weekend, uh, when he comes back, back into the train is what'd you do today, Josh, or this weekend, Josh? Oh yeah. I went on this awesome mountain bike ride. Uh, or we went and snowshoed and did all this, or we went and, uh, you know, we skied. Uh, I mean, the guy is twice the man of a lot of people I've met with spina bifida. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, and, uh, and, and, and he would tell me on a daily basis that, uh, or every time we train, I guess, but that, that all that core engagement, that breathing and, and all those strong first principles, even though they mostly related for him, um, waist up. Mm -hmm. Uh, how much they helped him enjoy the highest quality of life that he could possibly enjoy. So that is, is, is my all time favorite type of client. And then I have another one that was, um, life liver, uh, total adventurist. And she was out doing that paragliding stuff. Uh, and when you're sitting in those things, you're sitting in an L sit position, um, and unfortunately, uh, she was coming in for a landing, lost some wind and basically did a 35 foot straight down fall oh, in the wow. sit position. Oh my yeah. God. So broke her back, right? Uh, never supposed to walk again. Uh, and, uh, well, she's walking <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, but not exactly perfect. Uh, you know, we've been working on that. Her right, uh, foot, uh, her heel, when she first came in, she had to walk on her tippy toes almost, uh, so basically it had about, I don't know, six, in, you know, six inch heels, eight inch heels, uh, without the heel there. Uh, um, so right. yeah, so that was a real struggle for her. And so I had, had to come up with what, what do I do? So again, strong first principles. I had her plan off of that, that foot in the Turkish get up position to go up to the elbow and the hand. So she had to use that foot 
to engage the hip and then pull up, right? So we just came up with these little, then of course, seated halo, seated pressing. Again, you know, we're working on her mostly from the waist up. Uh, all these core building things that we use. And now um, she's almost putting her heel on the ground. Um, and and when she does, she uh, it, it's a huge freaking moment, you know? And these are, are the things that are badass, right? That's that's awesome, man. That's that's incredible. That's uh, that's. It's so rewarding to, uh, to, to have those moments and, and when you're working with clients. So that's really cool. Awesome, awesome job. Awesome stuff. Yeah, and it's so fun. And then uh, I, I have a couple people that are at the level they're, they're going for strong first. Um, so that's really awesome. As a matter of fact, one of, one of the guys that's one of our members uh, is attempting the strong first next weekend. Nice. Yes, nice. yes. So he's nice. – uh, He's been coming in and, and taking classes with us, and uh, and uh, he bought a ten session package, and we uh, honed in his skills, and he and he's going for it. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of cool stuff going on. A lot of cool stuff going on. Awesome, man. So let's let's kind of build on this right here. Let's have you talk a little bit more um, about your training philosophy, and then uh, also why you view yourself as a durability coach. Ah, yes, yes. So. Basically, the durability coach thing, um, like I said, I train a little bit of everybody, right? Um, if, if someone comes to me and says they want to do a bikini competition in eight months, I refer them out. Maybe to my friend Kristen, who's a bikini competitor, right? I'm going to put them where they need to be. I, I, I'm not going to take that job because – my thing is, is I just want to make durable human beings, right? I want the everyday athlete to be able to wake up and if their friend calls them and says, hey, check it out, we're going to go climb Mount Rainier um, in two weeks. What do you think? Hell yeah. My body's ready. In the next two weeks, maybe we're going to have to work on a little bit of mountaineering skills, but my body is not going to be the excuse to why I can't go experience that awesome journey in life, right? Um and, and that for me, durability is having equal parts, strength, mobility, and stability, right? right. You know, three equal parts. Um, so I don't want to train the power lifter. God bless them. They're, I, they're ma- I don't know why I say God bless them. I'm not totally religious, but I'm, you know, it's just a nice thing. But anyways, uh, I love what they do. It's impressive. I think it's awesome, but I don't coach them. You know, that, that, that's for somebody else, right? I just, you know, I, I use the strong first principles to just make people able to wake up in the morning and take off and take on any adventure that they want. You know, I mean, and that is what it's about. And for me, that's being a durable human being. Being able to lift a Volkswagen is awesome, right? But being able to jump out of the way of that Volkswagen coming down the street really fast at you, that's better, <laughs> Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it right? does. Totally. Yeah, that's more important. Right? Yeah. That's more and, important. And right now, you know, and maybe it's out of maturity. I'm 42 right now. So, uh, you know, back in the day, lifting the, 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 the Volkswagen, yeah, hell yeah. Let's drink some beers and figure out how to lift that Volkswagen. You know? <laughs> uh, but that was great. But, um, but now, um, and I guess, you know, I mean, is it right or wrong? But I train my people how I train myself. Right. You know, in, in a roundabout durability way. Um, and if, if, if they want to be trained different, like I say, I just refer them out, you know. So I think it's important as a coach and it's really hard in the beginning. Um, if you and the client don't gel and you're not on the same page, screw that. Right. I, I got in this because I'm passionate about it. Right. Uh, right. The dollar bills, they, they come and they go, but I'm not going to sit there and take someone's money for 60 minutes. When they're miserable, and I'm miserable. You know, um, so I've been fortunate enough to, to 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 be able to stand by that. So every session I go into, we don't have to argue, we don't have to butt heads. We just laugh. We get strong. We move better. We slap high fives. They go home and have a great freaking day. You know, there it's 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 a healthy environment. Right. And, um, and I think that that leads to being a durable human being mentally, spiritually, physically, just all around better, better person. Right. Yeah. And that's my goal for my, that's my goal for my clients. But with that said, with that type of training, a couple of them can lift a Volkswagen, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, but, but that wasn't our focus that that was just the byproduct of moving very well 
under uh, loads that are challenging your stable core, you know, um, and when you can get stability in the core and you can move well, you're, I mean, you become pretty much bulletproof, uh, you know, and it's awesome. And yep. it's, it's a great way to be. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Um, okay, so building on the durability there. All right. <laughs> Here's a great segue. So why, uh, you, you said this while I was out there I, and like I lit up when I heard this. So three, three and three Turkish getups a day, keep the doctor away. So following up on the durability there, why do you think doing at least three getups each day, uh, kind of helps, helps to build the durability and the bulletproof? Oh man. Uh, if anybody follows me uh, on Facebook or social media or any of these things, they'll, they'll know um, that I love the get up. <laughs> it is bang for the buck. I mean, I really think the get up is probably the most important exercise a human being should master. When we get to a point in our life where we can't get off the ground anymore, life becomes pretty tough, right? So, Starting now, now, if you're not doing get ups and you hear this thing, start now and you start doing get ups at least three and three a day. I guarantee, well, I'm not going to guarantee you, but if you're 28 years old right now and you start doing that, when you're 75, you're still going to be doing it. <laughs> right? Right. Uh, I mean, the get up in itself, you're working stability, mobility, strength, spatial awareness. Um, it, 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 for me, it gets into a meditative flow state. Uh, you know, when I'm doing multiple get ups, I'm so focused on precise movement, how to dance around that bell. But people tell me when they watch me do get ups in person, sometimes they're like, okay, that was yoga on steroids. I get it. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it, it's just, it's just you and this piece of iron and you're trying to move around it and get this, you know, this idea of spatial awareness and, 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 and strong, flexible, mobile movement to get this load up overhead. It's not just getting up off the ground for me. Uh, that, 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 that's not it. It's about owning a bunch of small movements that make up one perfect one. And each one of those movements, even on their own, can make you a better human. Just going yes. up to the elbow is a great core exercise. It's a great, you know, but anyway, the get up, full encompassing, head to toe, uh, 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 movement that will help you be stronger, will help you work on your mobility, will help you with your stability and overall durability, period. Do them. I love it, man. That's, that's probably my favorite as well. It's just, it's so, it's so empowering and gratifying to do that movement, you know, and it just, there's so many nuances to that, uh, that kettlebell lift that you just, you just continue to peel away the layers over, over the, uh, over the years of doing it. Absolutely. And that's what I love about strong first in general. You know, perfection is, is, is a myth. Um, I look at, uh, the swing and the get up and all these things. Um, perfection is, is a razor blade. It's like so sharp that it's, it's really hard to, to hit that razor blade. And it's almost impossible in my humble opinion. Right. But if you can stay within a, like a, a, a Sharpie width of that razor blade, if you can keep it in there and, and, and you can move precisely enough to keep it within that, you start getting into the roller, uh, like a paintbrush away from that, uh, that razor blade, like a Jillian Michael swing or something like that. Then you're going to have some problems, but, right. um, the, the, the technique required and, and, and the stuff and the work required to stay within that, that Sharpie is, is so rewarding for me. Um, it, it, I, I just love it. I know I'm not going to perfect it, but damn it, every time I do this stuff, I'm going to stay within that Sharpie away from that razor blade. And uh, it, 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 like I said, it's flow state. It's so intentional. And, and while you're doing it, you're getting stronger, moving better. You're not just jumping around to jump around, you know, yeah. it, it, and I, I love that. I, I love it. Yeah. Me, me too. Me too. That's, that's one of the best things about it is, uh, it's, it requires, uh, so much of your attention. Um, that's right. And, and, you know, that's when, you know, God forbid, that's when an accident happens is when you're not paying attention, but, that's right. It, it demands, you know, the respect, uh, yeah, you know, moving through all the, all the different movements of that lift. And it's, it's just, oh, it's so, it's so much fun. And, 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 
Go ahead. Go, go. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, I was just thinking, and that is, uh, and I think that's one of the tough things with pro, with systems like this, uh, with the attention spans of people nowadays, um, <laughs> right? And the, the 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 Groupon athlete and the 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 class pass, which I'm hey great, that brings people into our gym. So hey, class pass, great, you know. But people jump around so much that uh, I mean, variety is great, but sometimes variety can lead you nowhere, <laughs> right? Uh, it's like trying to find that person that wants to sit down and focus on something. Um, it's hard to do, but when you convince them to do it, stop. I mean, it's so awesome because work is hectic. Home is hectic. Everything is hectic. And you go to another hit class, that's just more hectic. Right. I mean, you know, it's great. You're sweating, you're working out, but do you ever really get to think and focus on something? Um, and, and I've had people tell me, man, it's like my job's better, dude. I'm coming in there and making you making me focus on what I'm doing for 60 minutes and really analyze and think about stuff is helping me keep my attention span better elsewhere. Yep. You know, um, I wasn't getting that when I was doing other movements that are all about how many you can do in X amount of time or or whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's hard to find uh, sometimes that person. But when you do the the, the coaching um, experience is just awesome when you have total buy in. And, and I think uh, that's what I love about doing this. Uh, people have to buy in and when they buy in things just flow and, and you work together and you're on the same mission. And it's it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Totally, man. That's that's so cool. I love uh, I love hearing you talk about it because it's just like I just uh, I get so pumped up. You just you just again the the energy and enthusiasm, um, and it's exactly that's exactly how I feel. It's it's so rewarding watching people get fired up about that uh, and seeing those changes happen. You know, absolutely. It's so absolutely. cool. Hey, I want to share one more story about someone that's going to be doing a strong first event here. Uh, the one coming up in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Uh, her name's Tori. Yeah. Her name's Tori Kelso. And, and the reason I'm telling you this, cause, I, uh, it, it really does push home the point of rehab to performance. Um, this gal, very active, very strong, very awesome all around athlete, but she came to us broken. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, right. Um, and we went through that whole dynamic of the docs, the athletic trainer and myself. Um, we spent five sessions together in the rehab environment and she, uh, started getting stronger. So but surely ended up doing the classes and now she's going for strong first. So, um, going from, I got to go to the doctor because I can't move. And then probably what it'll end up being a total of six months later, uh, wow. or eight months later going to, um, to a strong first event. And what her, the majority of her training has been is the six movements of strong first over this period. So, uh, people that say we're all just about being strong or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Strength is the pursuit. But along that journey, we work stability, we work durability, we work mobility. So it's just, you know, I mean, we're, the, we're, we're you know, it's a whole package. Uh, so, uh, and, and this is proof of it. And, and this is why I think the future of gyms is to have that rehab with the performance side because it's just boom, full circle. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, you're definitely going to have to keep me posted on, uh, on, on her and how the, the certification goes for her and everything. That's an awesome story. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah, cool. I, I just want to get that out there. Yeah, man, for sure. So uh, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's kind of talk about um, you know your current your your training uh, your your goals a little bit. I know uh, I was definitely lucky enough to get in some um, sessions that we did. We worked uh, with the barbell out there. You're, you're preparing for the uh, SFL, I believe, in September. Is that right? September. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, that I know that's on the horizon for you. Um, but kind of let's let's chat about that a little bit. So currently, uh, I am getting ready for the SFL, um, and I'll, I'll be quite honest. Over the last uh, six years, I basically just did the bells and the body weight. That's it. You know, that's it. Um, I had a uh, maybe a total of a month of training with barbells, uh, over the last six years, right. if you count a session here or a session here or a session here, whatever. Right. So, uh, 
to one of the uh, amazing benefits of making team leader uh, at Strong First is uh, yeah, you get a little bit of a discount on, on going to certs, right? So uh, uh, I, I'm taking full advantage of that, and I'm signing up to, uh, for the SFL in Portland. So I'm focusing on um, you know the, the the barbell lifts, the, uh, the the low bar back squat, the deadlift, the bench press, the military press, and uh, it's been really nice. Uh, it, I love the bells, but, but it's been nice, uh, slowing down, taking those three minutes of rest between sets and, uh, and just having fun, uh, not worrying about, uh, having to get the workout, uh, in. Um, I've, I've been, uh, setting, uh, an hour and a half to two hours aside out of my schedule to, to work with my buddy, which is a SFL guy, Alex Andrews. Um, great guy, uh, awesome, awesome individual. And, uh, so I'm really having a lot of fun, uh, just slowing down and lifting up really heavy stuff, uh, and squatting really heavy stuff. Uh, so, and it's been good for my body overall. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what I'm currently doing. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that was cool. I was, uh, I was definitely able to get in some sessions, uh, with you and Alex. I was out there. So that was cool. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So glad to hear the training's going well. Um, yeah. What, uh, is there anything else you wanted to cover? We hit, we hit on all the, uh, we hit on all our topics that we had down. Well, I, uh, I think people in general, um, when it comes into getting into the, to the fitness thing, um, especially with kettlebells, uh, I hate that people are intimidated by it a little bit, but it kind of makes me happy in a way, uh, uh, slightly. Um, I just, want to, to reach out and say that, um, find a quality coach, uh, to start your kettlebell practice, um, and be really careful if you're in a situation in, in a gym that is doing like some kind of circuit type of situation and there's a kettlebell and part of that circuit. And, uh, before you rotate through that circuit and grab that bell and just start doing something with it, uh, question that, uh, you know, it'll make sure that, that what you're doing with that bell that is appropriate. Uh, cause the kettlebell used properly is, in my opinion, the most efficient strength and fitness tool there is. Period. Um, used improperly is like dropping a, a 45 pound plate on your foot. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> right. Right. right? Uh, I mean, you know, so, um, and, and the problem is, is that people go and use them in these little circuits and because they've seen them on TV or, or, or somewhere on a commercial or YouTube video, um, and then they hurt themselves maybe, and then they blame the kettlebell, uh, not, not who put the kettlebell in their hand or not themselves for not taking the time to get to understand how to use it. And then they tell their friend, oh, I do kettlebells, but I hurt myself. And, you know, and it's just a bad representation of kettlebell training in general. It's actually... When done properly, like I said, I rehab people with it. I fix bad backs with it. I don't break backs with it, right? Uh, you know, so so uh, take your time to to find a good experience with with kettlebells with a professional coach before you make up your mind how it is in a circuit training uh, situation where nobody knows what the hell they're doing with it. Uh, anyways, for sure, no, that's that's a great piece of advice and and very important because. Um, they've definitely become, uh, more and more popular over the last, you know, two to three years. Uh, and that's, that's definitely something that, um, more clients tend to run into is, is having that type of experience you just described. So, uh, thank you. That's a great point to make. So let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, wrap up. We'll do the rapid fire questions. Okay. So these are, uh, these are all fun. I ask each guest, um, so given your current uh, knowledge level and experience, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give yourself uh, 10 years ago? Find out who the hell Pavel Satsulane is. <laughs> I wasn't the best athlete, dude, but if I would have found these kettlebells back then, I would have been unstoppable, period. I believe that. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, I think uh, I think we already got this one earlier, but but just in case it's not clear, what's your favorite strength training exercise? Turkish get up. Love it. Uh, how's your training changed uh, today compared to ten years ago? It's focused. I was randomly chasing strength back in the day. 
now I'm on a clear path toward it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, have you ever had an injury? And if so, uh, how did the injury uh, change your training? Uh, three years ago, I had this – well, I've always had the bucket list item, but uh, my bucket list item <laughs> was before I turned 40 – to uh, do a commercial fishing season on a boat in Alaska, <laughs> right? Uh, Discovery Channel is my favorite uh, channel, so I wanted to be inside the channel. You know, I wanted to live it. Um, so I went uh, up commercial fishing, and I worked on the deck of my buddy's boat, um, the Cape Elrington. Uh, really awesome experience. But I was wrestling a line under extreme tension, and as I was with uh, both hands, basically doing like a reverse grip deadlift to try and clear it from the boat, and the, when a line under tension is no longer under tension, it goes back to true to where it's supposed to be. And when that happened, um, it about ripped my arms directly from my shoulders. Uh, and I had a nice little whiplash injury. Um, before I went to Alaska, uh, I wasn't doing it well, but I was doing it well enough. I was doing sets of five double B swings, uh, double 48s and, when I came home from Alaska, I went in and talked to Andrea, and I couldn't swing the 16 without it coming out of my hand. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I uh, I had a lot of work to do, um, needless to say. So uh, what I did is I uh, I got into the bottoms-up kettlebell world. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, man, uh, I could talk about this for hours, but the, uh, the bottoms-up work, uh, I spent a whole month um, with the applicable bell, um, and no matter what movement it was, if it could be done bottoms up, I did it. Every get up, every clean, every squat, every press, everything that could be done bottoms up, I did it. Um, uh, I, uh, I tested myself and this was after a little bit of rehab before I did this. Uh, I could bottoms up, almost bottoms up hold the, uh, 16 on my left. Um, on my um, right, uh, the brunt of my injuries on my left side. On the right side, I could bottoms up press the uh, the twenty four. Uh, so that's where I was. After a month of just strictly doing this, basically I was doing kettlebell moving target complex. Uh, you know, this clean squat press two right. three five rep scheme, and I did it all bottoms up. And uh, at the end of it, I retested and I pressed the thirty two on my right. Uh, bottoms up and on my left I got the 32 up but when I was re-racking it it went to my wrist um, yeah. and that was basically in a month and maybe uh, and then maybe a week of uh, going strictly bottoms up and just adding kilograms every week it uh, it was amazing and I wish I would have took better notes uh, I, uh, because uh, one of these days I'm going to write a program uh, based around bottoms up movement and uh, it, it's, it's 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 the real deal it, it, it I mean that's incredible that's unbelievable. <laughs> wow. And it's true. Uh, I'm not BSing one bit. That's so cool. Well, let me know when you write that program because I'll be trying that one out. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Um, okay. What's one thing uh, that high school athletes should be doing more of uh, to uh, complement or improve their, their training and their health? I'd like to say get ups because I believe in get ups, but young athletes, if they can master the kettlebell swing, like master the kettlebell swing and get that, uh, that, that core stability that's required, that posterior chain strength, that, uh, that core stability and that explosive power from the swing, uh, you can't tell me that a, uh, an athlete will not be better, uh, and more powerful, more explosive if they really, really know how to swing a kettlebell. Awesome. Awesome. What's your best tip uh, to improve recovery after a training session? After a training session, I like to do um, a little bit of the, the ground force method -y type of stuff. Uh, some, you know, figure four seated circles, bretzel stretches, uh, maybe arm bars after you're all lubed up, but then finishing with a little bit of uh, a little bit of foam rolling at the end and just letting it all loose, uh, trying to get as relaxed as humanly possible. As a matter of fact, when you're to aid in your recovery, when you are working hard style techniques in between sets, you uh, turn yourself into jello person, you know, enjoy that time, not under tension. And then when you step back up to the bell, you're going to find that tension. So throughout your training session, uh, you're really aided in your recovery if you're smart about it. Right on, right on. Um, 
What's one book everyone should read? <laughs> Gosh, man, there's, there's, there's so many, but, uh, I'm just going to stay with the one that I'm on right, on right now, the, the, the boys in the boat, um, story of just, just young, hardworking men, um, coming together as a team to do something that it, I get goosebumps, but just to pull off a miracle basically. And, uh, you know, it's a good, good story in teamwork, a good story of, uh, uh, intestinal fortitude, um, and just all about human fire to, uh, to compete and, and to be as good as possible at something. Um, uh, I think we all need to find something to be good at, uh, you know, uh, jack of all trades is great, but you know, finding is something that you're really, really good at is, is awesome and rewarding. For sure, man. Yeah. That, uh, I'm reading that right now. I got a little bit left, but that book is unbelievable. Very cool. Plus I'm, I'm biased. I'm biased. I'm a rower. So I'm totally biased. <laughs> oh, you've inspired me, bud. I've been, uh, I suck, man. I suck at rowing, but I'm working on it. Uh, I've been, uh, uh, I got the strong first coming up next weekend. So I've gotten back into the bells a little bit and, uh, uh, I, I have a little, I wouldn't say it a huge muffin top, but when I'm, uh, when I'm, when I'm power lifting or weight lifting, I think that milkshakes are a good idea and a lot of bacon and biscuits and gravy. So, uh, I was like, okay, so for the next two weeks, man, I'm going to row 2000 meters a day. So when I show up to the strong first event, I'm not going to look like a muffin, uh, but, uh, it's, it's been great, man. Uh, and, uh, next time I see you, um, you're going to sit me down and you're going to make me do, uh, do it right, or at least help me in that direction because I, I I'm going to, I find a great enjoyment, uh, being at elite and opening the garage door, rain, snow or shine and putting that thing uh, out there on the front deck and, uh, and just rowing. Uh, I'm really, uh, uh, that book, uh, helped me look at the spiritual side of it a little bit. So I'm not just rowing out there to, to row. I, I'm kind of thinking about it actually gliding through the nice. water. It's cool. It's a cool, nice. it's a cool 2000 meter, uh, time just to check in. And then when you get off of it, you feel like you're going to die, but it, uh, it's pretty awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're, uh, you know, getting in touch with the erg a little bit and enjoying, uh, rowing and stuff. That's very, very cool. Um, and yeah, absolutely. When, uh, next time we hook up, I will be more than happy to, uh, return the favor and, and give you a little bit of coaching on, uh, on something I know a little bit about. <laughs> I love, I love cool. It. I love cool. It. Um, well, hang on the line. Uh, we'll wrap up here, but it's been an absolute blast, uh, having you on, sharing, uh, your journey, your story and, uh, you know, your experiences with, uh, the strength and conditioning community and rowing community. Uh, and so everyone can benefit uh, from Jeff's words of wisdom. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, cheers. Thank you, my friend. I can't wait to do it again. If you enjoyed this episode, I greatly appreciate if you would take a moment of your time and drop a five-star review into iTunes. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in next week when I interview Steve Capobianco, Rock Tape Medical Director and Movement Specialist. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Leo Training Podcast. Subscribe and get even more expert training tips at www.leotraining.io.